Hello, I'm Will. I wrote this book. And I'm going to read a part about masks. It's right in the middle, so some of it won't make any sense if you haven't read the book already. But that's, that's okay. I'm sure you can keep up. The main character's name is Roni, and he has fallen in with a troupe of goblin actors. And that's their stage. And, yeah. That's all you need to know for the moment. <clears throat> Thomas tapped the floor of the wagon with his cane, and he smiled a sly smile. Roni, we will now accomplish a very great mystery of our profession. Something ancient and grand. We will mask ourselves and walk through the streets of Zambe to the site of our performance. We will each walk alone by several routes. And in this way we will find our audience. Those who take notice of you as you pass, those who follow to see where you will lead uh, without attempting to, say, arrest you, they are our audience. We will each of us lead them down to the docks and upstream to the very last pier of the floating market. Nani will ride on ahead and meet us there with the stage itself. Do you know the way? Roni nodded because he did. Do you know several ways? Thomas Preston. Will you lose yourself once separated from the rest of us? No, Roni said. I won't get lost. I don't get lost. He didn't always know where home was. Home used to be a shack that moved all over Southside, according to Graba's whim, but he always knew where he was in Zambe. Good, said Thomas. Remember, Roni, and all the rest of you, that what we do is important. This is a mystery of our craft. Carry yourselves with appropriate poise. This is what we always do whenever we forget to put up posters, Essa whispered to Roni. Nobody would know about the show otherwise. Thomas pretended not to hear her, even though her whispering voice still carried. The old goblin took off his big black hat and pulled from it a mask with a high forehead and an iron crown. This was for himself. He also took out a smaller hat and a pair of gloves and gave both to Roni. Put these on, he said, and the fox mask with them. You might also leave that tattered coat behind. Roni refused to take off his coat, but he put on the hat, the gloves, and the mask. The fox face smelled leathery, and it pressed oddly on the skin of his face. His nose itched. Then he stopped, focusing on the mask, and looked through it. He saw his surroundings through fox eyes. Don't slouch, Thomas told him. Not at all. Foxes are small, smaller than you are, but they do not slouch. Neither do actors. Stand and move with purpose. Move the way the mask would prefer you to move. Roni wasn't sure how the mask wanted to move, but he tried to stand up straight. Good, said Thomas. The mask slipped down Roni's face a bit. He tried to straighten it, and then he tried to ask whether he had it on properly, but Thomas shushed him. Don't speak while masked, the old goblin said. Not if you can possibly help it. Roni took off the fox face. Why not? He asked. I had lines to say when I was playing a giant. You did, said Thomas, and you delivered them with a certain amount of untrained talent, and that is why. Roni blinked. He didn't understand and he wasn't willing to shelve his lack of understanding this time. I shouldn't talk while masked because I'm good at it. Quite right, said Thomas. As with a charm or a chant, the world might change to fit the shape of your words. Your own belief becomes contagious. Others catch it. You believed yourself a giant when you spoke as a giant, and so you became one. Your audience regarded you as one. They knew better, but they believed it anyway. I got taller, Roni asked. Everyone thought so, said Thomas. So please don't declaim anything at all while wearing another face, most especially anything about yourself. And remember, always remember that charms and curses have consequences. You set yourself apart from the world by changing the shape of it. Okay, so he does, as Thomas described, walk through town 
with a fox mask on. And he does notice that some people, most people even, don't, don't even see him go by. They don't notice him at all. He stands out. He's wearing a fox mask, but no one notices him go by. And this happens. This is true. Um, I talked this over with a master mask maker named Jeff Semmerling, who made this one. Uh, he's in Chicago. And he and sometimes he wears his own masks, just walking around town, going about his business. He'll wear like, crazy, extravagant masks, masks with huge feathers, Mardi Gras-type masks. And lots of people don't even see him go by. It's truly bizarre. Um, and some people see him but are annoyed because they don't know why this weird thing is happening. And other people see him and and they're delighted. And in the story, those, the ones that see him, that see Roni go by and that follow him, that's, that's the audience. That's the audience needs to find and gather together. Um, and this, this really happens. Yeah, I suppose that's all I wanted to tell you about. A behind, behind the scenes glimpse of um, talking things over with a master mask maker and that this, this really happens sometimes. An unexpected thing, a truly unexpected thing. Many, 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 many people won't, won't even see it. It won't register in their mind or their memory at all as it walks by. So the question is, if a bunch of goblins and masks walk by you unexpectedly, are you going to see them or not? Thanks for listening.